Please. <laughs> Hello folks and welcome to Tioga County Contra Dance's first on live uh, live YouTube event. We're here at the home of uh, Joe and Renee and they're going to be performing for you soon. I just want to let you know that this project is made possible in part by public funds from NISCA's decentralization program uh, administered regionally by the Arts Council of the Southern Finger Lakes. Thanks a lot, and hang in there and enjoy. Hey folks, we're gonna play some old time tunes for you. And seeing that these folks came from way down south in a we go to here, <laughs> we'll start out with a southern tune. And uh, I'd like everyone to know that no animals were wrongfully harmed in this production. <laughs> Anyway, here we go, ready? set this up so everybody could see the audience but we knew that one guy was in the witness protection program so I didn't think he'd want to be filmed you know so anyway uh, this oh actually I want to tell you this banjo and that fiddle have been in our hands for a hundred years that's right wow. I've been like a hundred years <coughs> you look so young yeah. <laughs> both of us have been playing these two instruments for well over 50 years so that tells you how old we are <laughs> this tune, yeah. <laughs> this tune is a tune that's kind of a hybrid, at, uh, both um, European and American. But I'd like maybe you guys to try to guess the name of this tune. Let's kind of see if I can start it.
<laughs> I don't know if you guys missed those notes I missed there, but I'll hear about that when the company leaves, I'll tell you. Well, fortunately, they weren't the same notes that I missed. <laughs> so, I didn't, I didn't, I don't oh, know that song. The name of the tune is called Little Billy Wilson. Okay, so, yeah, that's a really cute little tune. This song we're going to play here is um, Elizabeth Cotton of fame. Once, when she was young, played her brother's banjo. And I remember years ago, I heard this song on a recording somewhere, and I just kind of played a little bit of it. And I didn't know it, and Renee is good at finding things, and she looked it up and found it. And Mrs. Cotton's voice, of course, with the timbre in her voice, I could barely understand what she was singing, but it has a very pretty little tune, and you guys can catch it a little bit. And then we're gonna play um, another one of my banjo heroes, Dot Boggs, played an old tune called Cold, Coal Oven March, which I have, of course, changed. But it's we're gonna kind of pair it with that. But anyway, this little tune you sounds... Wanna, you wanna tell them about this fiddle oh, a little bit? Oh, and this bit? fiddle, of course, is one... This one is all made out of one piece of wood, and it's made out of an old yellow pine barn beam. And uh, a fellow, we the, actually the guy that made that minstrel banjo for me had this in his collection, and we thought it was a must-have. <laughs> so it's and it, it, as you can see, it's very quirky, but it it's a really cool little instrument. And it sounds way different than those other violins do. Let me start this for you. is nowhere near, of course, uh, Elizabeth Cotton's voice, but I, I hope you didn't understand me either, because... <laughs> anyway, so this tune is kind of an interesting song. So, in the mind of my favorite banjo hero, Uncle Dave Macon, which, of course, I stole his name and they call me Uncle Joe, because I like him. Anyway, in 1926 and 1927, when he was in his music heyday, actually, Nashville flooded. The Cumberland River rose 56 feet. 
road ten, it, it, it rained over 10 inches in a very short time. And two people lost their lives and over 10,000 were homeless after that. And he wrote this tune and I heard the tune and I'm like, wow, that's great. And then I learned the story to it, but it really, um, evidently they're, they're on a floodplain down there. So it happens occasionally. It's raining here right now, so it's appropriate. <laughs> People are running up on the mountains. I'm going hunting. Oh, my little darling, fare thee well. Oh, my little darling, ain't I gone? Oh, my love, lonesome road. Oh, my love, lonesome road. No, you won't if you don't tell me I'm wrong, baby, I'm gone. Said that water was rising in the cellar, coming up more up to the floor. Better run to open the door. here how are we doing on time anyway we uh looks like we got a lot of time yeah. you want to tell them a little bit about All this right. so the next couple of tunes we're playing are called anderson's road song and french tune which are um tunes from canada they're metis tunes and um i really like those northern canada type tunes so i was feeling like during the past year, I really ought to like learn something <laughs> while I was waiting around for things to improve. So I started taking every fiddle workshop I could find and they were all up in Canada. It was really pretty amazing. And 
I took a bunch of classes from people like Richard Forrest and um, Lisa Ornstein and Calvin Volrath. And Calvin Volrath is this amazing guy. He's about the same age as me, a little bit younger. He's written 800 tones, yeah. and every one of them is great. And he's just this amazing fiddler, and he just is so happy to teach people. Um, so he does classes and workshops. So anyways, he wrote the second tune, called just simply called French Tune. And the first tune, Anderson's Road Song, is a tune that was that he learned from his friend Gilbert Anderson, who was a great fiddler, who learned it from um, an older fiddler from long ago. Um, I think his last name was Ward. So anyways, they're just two great, cute little tones that I enjoy playing. And um, so let's give them a go. Kick it off, Professor. Did you tell them who the Métis are? Uh, no. Maybe, maybe folks don't know who the Métis are. Well, they're um, a group of people who are um, indigenous people and Scottish people heritage kind of mixed all up. And um, they have this great music culture. They really appreciate fiddle playing. And they have a lot of dances and... Um, it's, they just have a lot of, a lot of spiritual fiddle work, which is just really great. They're stuff. from way up in northern Canada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. 
anyway, so let's see if we can find this old. This old banjo here isn't isn't old actually. This one was made uh, by a fellow named Don Gardner for me, and this is a copy of a banjo that you might have seen in the 1850s. And this, of course, was played on the minstrel stage, which we don't like to talk about anymore. But there was a lot of good music that came out of that, and. Uh, we're gonna to try to do a, we're gonna make spectacles of ourselves now <laughs> for you. And actually, I need to, okay, so anyway, you might have seen something like this happen at one of those old shows. Are we ready to roll there? It's called Limber Jack, and this one was made by our friend Cody Cook, and it's just perfect. It's uh, he made this out of very old, uh, also old barn lumber, and it's just really he's really cool, you know. And he uh, and of course you see these things in the in um, uh, Appalachian gift shops and such, but we we found one and we had to make it for us. Yeah. What's beeping over there? It's the oven. Oh. Yeah, just push <clears throat> the cancel button. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know when I used to watch those country music programs when I was a kid? Somebody like Porter Wagoner would say, well, it's time for our inspirational <laughs> tune of the day. And somebody would sing one of those things. But anyway, um, getting back to our, our old friend Uncle Dave Macon. So it seems so back in 1925, no, I'm not sure. there was a famous trial that happened down in Dayton, Tennessee. And in Dayton, Tennessee, there was a fellow by the name of John Scopes who violated the, what was the name? I wrote, actually wrote it down, um, the Butler Act, which disallowed people from teaching evolution in high school or in school. So he did that and he called attention to it himself and he actually they had this big extravagant circus trial about it. it even in such a way that they brought in some chimpanzees as witnesses and the guy finally was fined a hundred bucks and the trial was turned over on a technicality but Uncle Dave Macon being a strong Christian man that he was wrote this song called The Bible's True but of course <laughs> In the mind of Mr. Macon, <laughs> you'll hear it anyway. Well, evolution teaches man come from a monkey. I don't believe no such thing, not in a week of Sundays. For the Bible's true, yes, I believe it. I've seen enough that I could prove it. What you say, what you say, it's bound to be that way. Perfect a monkey ain't in it. What you say? What you say? Bound to be that way. Well, I'm no evolution 
happiness I want everybody to see. Nobody born to this wide world to make a monkey out of me. For the Bible's true, yes, I believe it. I've seen enough that I could prove it. What you say, what you say, it's bound to be that way. Everything in it made man perfect and a monkey ain't in it. What you say, what you say is bound to be that way. Well, God made the world and then he made man. A woman for his help made, oh, beat that if you can. Well, the Bible's true, yes, I believe it. I've seen enough that I could prove it. What you say, what you say is bound to be that way. Perfect and a monkey ain't in it. What you say, what you say, it's bound to be that way. <laughs> well, I don't mean to offend anybody. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, okay, so, living up here in the country, life is kind of like this, and I was just telling Renee this morning that, uh, I used to, uh, around here, people used to kind of speak a different language. They had an old country language that they spoke. It was kind of a Pennsylvania hillbilly language mi mixed with New England language, and you'd hear people telling stories, and they they they'd fetch their fetch that cow over here. You know they had a different way of talking. You know, but it kind of reminds me of this little thing. I, you guys may know this tune actually. It kind of goes like this. Hey farmer. Will this road take me to Little Rock? Well, son, it ain't moved since I've lived here. <laughs> hey, farmer, you lived here your whole life? Well, not yet. <laughs> hey, farmer, it's pretty windy around these parts, wouldn't you say? Well, son, it is pretty windy. One day the wind stopped blowing for a couple minutes and all the chickens fell over. <laughs> hey, farmer, I thought you said that mud hole over there wasn't very deep. Well, it only come up to here on my ducks. <laughs> Hey farmer, how'd your potato crop turn out last year? Well, they didn't turn out at all. Me and the old lady had to dig them out. <laughs> hey farmer, we heard that you folks up here had to shoot a horse with a broken leg. Well, no, not really, son. We usually use a shotgun. <laughs> Hey farmer, you know there ain't much here separating you from a fool. No, nope, just my yard and the fence. Hey farmer, why don't you play the rest of that tune anyway? Well, I don't know the rest of that tune. I learned that part last year when the show passed through here. Well, hand that banjo down here to me. I'll play the rest of that tune for you. Why you know how to play the banjo? Sal, set another place for dinner. This young man can play the banjo. Ah. Here we go.
and the name of that tune was? Hey, the Arkansas Traveler. <laughs> Oh, that's right. <laughs> all right, all you guys, do you have your singing voices with you? No. Nope. <clears throat> you want to whiskey first? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, boy, I forgot that one. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to do the death defying thing to retune my banjo. Oh, no. <laughs> the question is can you tune a banjo? <laughs> Yes. All right. I think it's pretty close. Here we go. Are you in tune, man? I think so. Way up on Clinch Mountain, I'll wander alone. Drunk as the devil, boys, leave me alone. I'll eat when I'm hungry, I'll drink when I'm dry. If a tree don't fall on me, well, I'll live till I die. Rye whiskey, rye whiskey, rye whiskey, I cry. If you don't give me rye whiskey, I surely will die. Poor father, how dare you try me? Whiskey, rye, whiskey, a villain of old. You rob my poor pockets of silver and gold. Rye, whiskey, rye, whiskey, rye, whiskey, I cry. If you don't give me rye, whiskey, I surely will die. whiskey and I was a duck I'd dive to the bottom and never come up but the ocean ain't whiskey and I ain't no duck so I'll play jack of diamonds and trust to my love that. Here we go. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. Um. Six long years I've been 
been a rover is ringing for, with people right yes. now and that man it's been a long road you know it's a real pleasure to have you all here so I'm hearing that the world is longing for sea shanties <laughs> they're all hollering for sea shanties so we'll see if anybody can remember this one up she rises, way and up she rises, way and up she rises early in the morning, way and up she rises, way and up she rises, way and up she rises early in the morning. So what do you do with a drunken sailor? What'll you do with a drunken sailor? What'll you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Way and up she rises, way and up. When up she rises early in the morning Well you draw by the legs with a running bowl and draw by the legs with a running bowl and draw by the legs with a running bowl and early in the morning When up she rises when up she rises When up she rises early in the morning yeah, throw him in a long boat till he's sober, throw him in a long boat till he's sober, throw him in a long boat till he's sober, lie in the morning. Way head up she rises, way head up she rises, way head up she rises, or lie in the morning. So what do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor, or lie in the morning? Well, what are we gonna do with him? We'll shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Shave his belly with a rusty razor. Lie in the morning. Head up, she rises. Way head up, she rises. Way head up, she rises. Or lie in the morning. Then we'll throw him into bed with a captain's daughter. Throw him into bed with a captain's daughter. Throw him into bed with a captain's daughter. Lie in the morning. Head up, she rises. Way head up. Where up she rises early in the morning. So what'll you do with a drunken sailor? What'll you do what'll with you a do? drunken sailor? What'll you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? You throw him in the scuppers with a hose pipe on him. Throw him in the scuppers with a hose pipe on him. Throw him in the scuppers with a hose pipe on him early in the morning. Where up she rises. 
can't have the last 45 minutes of your life back. <laughs> but we're going to sing a, a nice little sea song on the way out here. And I think some of our folks here know it. Are you ready? You're going to sing, right? We're ready. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye my Rosiana. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. I won't be home tomorrow. That's nice, isn't it? Let's sing it again. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, my Rosiana. Bye bye. Well, the anchor, she's weighed, and the sails, they are set. Bye-bye, my Rosiana. And the girls that were leaving will never forget. I won't be home tomorrow. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Bye-bye, my Rosiana. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. I won't be home tomorrow. Well, goodbye. Sally and goodbye to Sue. Bye bye, my Rosiana. Those that are listening, well, goodbye to you. I won't be home tomorrow. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye, my Rosiana. Bye bye. Everybody.